Hello and welcome to a new video in my 3C++ tutorial series. In the last video we talked about structs. So basically we find a method to group some variables together into a so-called structure to use them easily. So the idea was that we can basically yeah, kind of like create our own data container. So we basically said, all right, for accumulating data, we need a sum and we need a num, both of the type in 64T. And we basically put them in a struct called accumulate data, which we then later on can use, for example, as a pointer or down here as a variable. And that is all nice and very, very simple to use. So basically this allows us to put together a struct. And we can actually even go further with that. We could even say, all right, I'm going to take a struct st2, for example, for struct2. And inside of this uh, st2, I'm going to uh, put some accumulate... Uh, how did I call this? Let me maybe copy this over. Accumulate data d0 uh, and I could maybe say like d1 and d3 and I would be able basically to chain them together as far as I want. So basically I can create a struct of structs and I could even like go further and say I'm gonna make an st3 and that st3 is gonna be composed out of maybe the st2 and the basically st2 and I could like say alright I also want to have some more data I want to have another int called value or st2 valid index or something like that where I'm gonna say later on which indices are valid of that struct it should be two here, lol. And I can basically then basically put them together as far as I want. And this is already the main thing that you need to know to create your own like data types in C. However, these structs are actually no data types. These structs are structs and a struct is kind of like a data type, but it's not usable as a data type. As you can see, if I use a normal data type like int 64t, I can just write int 64t and the name x for example but this doesn't work with accumulate data if i do this like that so if i would do accumulate data ad it doesn't work because the struct actually is not a data type it is a struct and this video is going to be about data types so how can we actually put a data type as a struct or how can we in general define own data types. So the idea in C is that you can basically tell the compiler to create a new data type on the name you want. So basically the general idea is you take one or multiple uh, already known data types and you turn them into your custom one. What I mean with multiple is going to be seen in the next videos. In general today we're just going to do it one by one. So you take one existing data type and turn it into a new one. So that you can do it is very simple. So for example, if I would have a uh, type called myInt, so I want to have a type that is just called myInt, and this myInt should be of type in 64T. So I can easily define this by telling the language that I want to um, define a type. And defining a type works by writing the keyword typedef. Typedef basically means I want to define a type. Type define. Now I need to write the currently existing type, so for example in 64T, and then I can write write the new name, so my int. And this basically now allows the usage of my int as a int 64t. So I could use this down here as the int and it would work properly. Or to make this a bit more um, yeah, a bit more reasonable, I could like say accumulate int here in this case. And then use the accumulate int for the sum and num. What I should then of course also use here and here. And if I do this like that, you can see it's still all gonna work the same. Maybe I'm gonna do this one here as well. If I would press a five, it's gonna compile and still work the same. Still printing the 20, which is a bit, it's a bit, yeah, boring the, 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 the values. 26 is a bit more interesting. So it still works the same. We just basically defined our own alias for that type. And now we want to do the same thing for the struct as well. So if we do this for the struct, really the the only um, yeah the only 
advantage that we get is that we don't need the struct keyword. So basically what I want to do is I want to type dev the accumulate data. All right, so let's try this out. So what I want to type dev here is something that's called accumulate data based on something called accumulate data. Is it going to work? Let's try it out. So what is the initial type that we have? The initial type is what we have written here so far. So we basically want to redefine a struct accumulate data. And what should be the new name? Just accumulate data. Does that work? Can we try this out? If we now remove that struct here, as you can see, very, very easily, it seems to work fine. Let's try it out and surely it works. So basically by having these things, we basically said, all right, we don't need the keyword struct for that because we want to treat the word accumulate data as a internal defined type that's going to be resolved to struct accumulate data. And if I hover over that, I can also see that uh, down here in the uh, input box in the like pop up here, we can see type the struct accumulate data name accumulate data. So this is properly defined and we can now use this as is. C does have a mechanic to make this a bit easier because you can see how oh, this is kind of like duplicated struct, accumulate data, type the struct, accumulate data, accumulate data. Mm, that's not really nice. C later on is going to do this automatically. As soon as we kind of like define a, a type, no matter if it is a class or a struct later in C, it is automatically going to type dev this as well. This is just a built in feature because, like most of the time, you want to have a struct that is type dev. So, Basically, in C++, we don't need to deal with that at all. But in C, we need. But in C, we have a option to do this easier. What we can basically do is do type dev type dev struct. And then we can basically write the struct in here and write the name afterwards. If we do it like that, it is working as expected. If I were to try to run this now, it again works because now we basically type the struct in itself. What are we doing here? Well, basically what we are doing is the same with the plain type dev. We are doing type dev struct, which basically means we want to create a new type based on a struct, and we are giving its name accumulate data. But instead of now basically supplying a pre-existing name of a struct, we are basically providing a unnamed struct. Just having these curly brackets here basically means that we have an unnamed struct called accumulate data. This is a struct that is unnamed. So this struct has no name and basically just holds the sum and the num, just valid for that uh, type def. And the type def, because it is defining in your type, makes it valid globally as the type accumulate data. One thing that's important here is that you can no longer use struct accumulate data. If you would now try something out like that, it should not work. Okay, it you can see that it is not allowed because it is an incomplete type. Incomplete type means it doesn't know that. Accumulate data here basically assumes a new struct called accumulate data. But we don't have a struct called accumulate data because it's an anonymous struct. We could make this named again by putting the name in here. So twice accumulate data. Now this down here would work because now we are basically saying, okay, type def a struct for accumulate data. Here is the direct implementation of that struct, attach that unnamed struct basically to that name, and then define a new type based on that name. So doing it like that works in both ways. Doing it the simple way, where you just need to write it once, just works for this normal way. Since we are later on transitioning to C++, we will from now on no longer use the struct keyword in C as well. We are gonna always declare structs like that, to basically make this nice and easy and simple. And that's all for today's video. Just a bit uh, about type devs so that you can basically see what's going on. One more, can, one more nice thing for you. Actually, these in 64 t if I would pick the definition here, you can actually see that these are type devs as well. These are type devs defined by the compiler, which uh, basically knows, the compiler knows how big the normal types are, like this char, short, int, long, I talked about them uh, previously. These like internal types that are always different depending on the platform. The compiler, of course, knows how big these are. And by knowing how big these are, we can basically create type desks for the int 8t, 16t, 32t, 64t, the same for you. And to basically be able to automatically uh, use the right type. So basically this header is generated like, yeah, nicely fast. 
behind the scene. Um, it basically works like a charm in the background. We don't need to really care about it. There are a few other things that are typed def here. Int max t, for example, for the maximum integer type. So the biggest type available. So if you want to always have the biggest type, you can in use int max t, something like that. It's all like in here, yes. including like the maximum value and the, the minimum value that are possible with the data types. It's all stored in here very simply. So if you are like, um, it's, it's actually the smallest head, I think, that is in the whole yeah, like C library, but if you are interested, you can always take a look on how the language works and behind by just opening up these headers and taking a look. And that's actually what I told you today. So basically, type dev, a very important thing to create your own types. It is, it, it still really doesn't matter. I mean, it's just an alias. It's just a textual alias, but in the context, it makes sense. So the context, it is accumulate int called sum, it's accumulate int num, and it's instead of the accumulate data, it just makes a bit more sense from reading it top to bottom. Also, if you want to now change it, so basically you see, ah, oh, all right, I do not like that. So I don't want to have this at 64-bit integers because it doesn't run well on 32-bit machines. You can just basically swap out one value here and all the rest of the code is going to change automatically because we always use accumulate int or accumulate data that was automatically resolved to the type. So instead now previously we had the type here, we had the type here, we had the type here, we had the type here. So one, two, three, four, five times we had basically five times the location of int 64t and if you would want to change the value or the type so to for example a 32 bit inch we need to change it at five times in this case if we type it we just need it to change it up here and it works like a charm you can also automatically generate this with the preprocessor which is something to what we're going to get in the future and basically the preprocessor then could be feeded with um, some information on the build and then like the user of your library if you are writing a library library is just a collection of functions that uh, other user or other programmer can use and if you are writing a library that user could basically um, during the compilation uh, feed the right values into the preprocessor and the preprocessor would then automatically populate the type devs not automatically you of course need to write a code for that automatic population but it would be able to change this automatically at compile time and then each user of your library of your predefined function is going to get the version that they like and that's very nice you could also do something like there is a type called size t size t is always gonna be um, as big as the system bus so if you are on 64-bit machine size t is going to be an unsigned there's also this s size t okay this is something that might be just c plus plus okay mm, wrong but you can i think could i signed to call this sign no it's not possible to resign this but basically the idea on size t is always an unsigned integer that is as big as the system bus so size t basically is the address space that is possible so the 32-bit machine it's gonna be two, uh, 32 over 2 minus 1 on a 64-bit machine it's gonna be a maximum value of uh, uh, 64 over 2 minus 1 so it's always gonna be 32 or 64-bit width to basically indicate uh, the system bus size or the size that is native to the system or like to the mode in which you are compiling. And this in our case does make sense. I mean like, yeah, we might want to use a signed value. So I would rather use, I don't know, normally there's also a S size T, which is a signed um, size T, so not an unsigned. Let's see if we have this in C. All right, sadly, the size T is not there in Linux, but there is an size t in windows but if we want to use windows functionalities we would need to include windows.h and then this size t works but since we are trying to be as platform independent as possible it seems like that size t is nothing that we can use in c sadly but that's okay then we're just gonna stay at that value here for for starters all right so that was type devs and creating custom types in c Last thing that we're going to do is say simple git commit and set in uh, the doing type devs to basically do this. Just hit commit all to commit all and push the button here to push it all to the server. And since all credentials are stored, this is easy, done and up on GitHub. Yay!
Nice. All right, so that's it with the video today. Just a short video talking a bit about type this and a bit more about types. Um, in the next video, we are still not talking about more pointer types because I personally do not feel ready to directly start and showing you more pointer types yet because we are still missing some basic stuff and now just overcomplicating pointers is not gonna work. So I changed my mind, we're just gonna do it chill and not overcomplicate pointers at the beginning. But next video, we are gonna at least revisit the pointers again so that you are back on track with pointers and we're gonna add uh, something to our simple C app. So next video, we're gonna actually add Input. So the simple C app currently just uses the simulated input and in the next video we're gonna make it to real user input. So that's it for today. See you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hope you enjoyed. Uh, until next time. Bye.